welcome. We're so glad that you're uh, with us for uh, church today. Our theme uh, of the sermon today, the title is uh, to rest a while. So our theme is rest. Now, it doesn't mean you're supposed to sleep during the service, but, uh, but we hope you find a way to, to rest in God's word and God's spirit. But uh, again, we're, we're so glad that you're with us in worship today. And I invite you now to join in our opening uh, uh, hymn, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. Let's uh, join and sing together. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. join me in our, our call to worship. It's selected from Psalm 89. Would you join me in our responsive reading? I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. With my mouth I will proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. You said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to my servant David, I will establish your descendants forever and build your throne for all generations. I have found my servant David. With my holy oil I have anointed him. My hand shall always remain with him. My arm also shall strengthen him. I will crush his foes before him and strike down those who hate him. He shall cry to me, you are my Father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. Amen. Please join me now in our opening prayer. Would you read with me? Loving God, 
We bow in humility before you. From our various lives and differing viewpoints, join us together in a common faithfulness and build in us the power of your uncommon love. Open our hearts to receive your teaching and open our hands to do your work. Help us to be united in your love so that your love is the foundation of our life as the household of God. Amen. I'd like to now invite you to stand and we'll sing together. Called has partners in Christ's service. Called has partners in Christ's service. Let's stand together. seated if we say we have no sins then we're deceiving ourselves and the truth is not a part of us but if we confess our skin sins our God who is merciful and just will forgive us and cleanse us of all of our unrighteousness it's in this confidence that we can make our confession together would you join me O Lord of hosts, our actions shame your church and hurt our fellow disciples. We have been one-sided in our judgments, have dealt falsely with friends, and have taken advantage of strangers for our own advantages. We do not like our selfish selves, and we need your forgiveness to change. Christ Jesus. We confess we long for your transforming love to rebuild us in newness of life and to join us spiritually so that we may rest, grow, and serve as a living temple to the living God. Let us now take a moment to make a personal confession for meditation, reflections, and this morning, take a moment to listen for God to speak to your life today.
is in a position to condemn us, only Christ. And Christ died for us. He rose for us. He reigns in power for us. He prays for you and for me. My friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Let us stand and greet one another with the peace of Christ by making some noise, shaking your rattle, saying a hallelujah. We pass the peace. Amen. Amen. God, we pray that you will send your spirit upon us. Open up our hearts and minds to the reading and the proclamation of your word that we might have the, the lesson that you have for us today. Amen. Our first lesson comes from the book of Ephesians, Paul's letter to the church at, at Ephesus. So then, remember that at one time you were Gentiles by birth, called the uncircumcision, by those who were called the circumcision, a physician, physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at one time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers of the covenant of promise, having no hope without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. In his flesh he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall, that is the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances so that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death the hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers or, and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Jesus himself has the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom, you, in, him, in whom also you are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. And from the Gospel of Mark, the sixth chapter. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. And he said to them, come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going and they had no leisure even to eat. 
and they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he was a, uh, went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to the land of Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went into the villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. We thank God for these words of life. Jesus needed a rest. And Jesus knew the disciples needed a rest. And today, don't we need a rest? Don't you need a rest? Don't I need a rest? With all the, the illness and death, with the stress of the D variant, variant rising up, with all the separation, with all the changes, with all the losses in this pandemic, don't we all need to rest a while? We've been bearing some incredible emotional and spiritual weight in this year and a half and we need to rest a while maybe we need to start spiritually resting so we'll be prepared to care for each other and ourselves in these times of of so many changes and and twists and and turns as we simply rest a while we have an opportunity to put our trust into Jesus and deepen our faith in God's love and to provide us what we need for our mission and for our service here at Fort St. Presbyterian and what we need to do to reach out to this weary world, this pandemic-weary world. I need to rest a while. I think we all need to rest a while. Jesus knew his disciples needed to rest, and Jesus knows that we need to, too. That you and I and together, we need to rest a while. In the context of our scripture from Mark, we see uh, a, a passage that has been divided. And when I first looked at it, I was puzzled by the, the separation of the, the passages and the choices. But the more I looked, the more I found that this was a message for us today. You see, the disciples had been sent out by Jesus into the world. He would commissioned them to go out. Now, he told them, don't take any provisions, don't take any money, don't take a, a second uh, a tunic, which meant don't travel far, this isn't going to be a long trip, it's just going to be a short burst of mission out into the world. And Jesus empowers them with his power and he sends them out and they perform miracles in Jesus' name. They heal the sick, they share the good news, and the, the truth of the gospel begins to, to spread. Now when they come back to Jesus, they're excited to tell them all that they have, have done. But Jesus sees in them a weariness. He sees that they are, are tired. 
It even says that they had been so busy as the people were coming around them that they couldn't even take time to, to eat. And so Jesus suggests that they go to a, a deserted place to take a, a little time away. Jesus says that they should go away and they should rest a while. This resting can be can be very important. But recognizing what kind of rest you need may be just as important. Carrie McLeish, a spiritual director, in her article in Lead and Leadership and Faith, in the, in the uh, article, Rediscovering Rest in All Forms, shares these insightful uh, thoughts that I'd like to share with you. It's a little bit long, but I hope that you, you see the power of it. Carrie writes, I came to rest through exhaustion. I went to the doctor thinking I had some serious medical condition, but all the tests came back negative. It turned out I was totally exhausted. I first learned that there are different sorts of, of rest, physical, emotional, mental, social, and spiritual. We can all feel exhausted and may recognize our need for rest, but do we know the sort of rest we need? How good are we at recognizing the areas in which we are drained, where we need to be refreshed, restored, and, and energized? Physical exhaustion is perhaps the area we are most familiar with, and it may be that we have only ever thought about rest in terms of our physical needs. For many today, work is primary emotional and mental rather than physical, and we are just as likely to be emotional or mentally exhausted as we are physically tired. During the year of living with the pandemic, we have all been doing a lot of extra emotional and spiritual work and are probably more drained in these areas than we would have been normally, even if our jobs were physically taxing. When we're physically drained, we know what we need to, to, to do, to eat or drink, sit down for a while, have an early night, or even take a nap. Do we have the same awareness about what we are supposed to do when we are spiritually drained? What can restore us in this area? When I was suffering with exhaustion, I thought I needed to stop and just do very little to physically rest. But in fact, I found that even though I was doing very little, I didn't feel any more rested at the end of the day. Eventually, I discovered that my primary exhaustion was spiritual and emotional, not physical. Physical rest wasn't what I needed. Actually, in some ways, it made things worse because doing nothing just gave me more time to focus on my anxiety and worry. I gradually learned my personal way of, of spiritual rest. I discovered that being in God's creation in nature buoyed me emotionally. In particular, spending time reading my Bible and praying under the trees. There was something about the trees' solidity, their rootedness, their age. They had been there before I was and would still be standing long after I was not. I was comforted thinking about how they went through seasons and weathered the effects of those changes. The different and bigger perspective on my circumstances brought me back down to earth and out of my own head. I found it peaceful and regenerative. In fact, I found that being in nature filled me with a spiritual rest. Rest need not be inactive, for me, being spiritually active was focusing on the spiritual gifts and spiritual restfulness. Active rest may sound counterintuitive, but spiritual rest can simply be the actions of reading and meditating and praying. If you're feeling exhausted, notice the areas in which you are weary is a good place to start. Is your exhaustion physical or is it actually spiritual? Or is your tiredness 
a result of a combination of these types of exhaustion. Discovering what sort of rest you need could be key. People in every walk of life are exhausted, but we have a God who gives permission to rest, who invites anyone who is spiritual weary to come actively rest. Jesus saw in his disciples a need to rest a while. And he tells them, and they get into the boat, and they travel across the lake, and we'll hear about that story next week. But when they arrive on the shore, they don't get the rest that they wanted. When they arrive, they find that people have seen them traveling along the shore, and they followed on foot to try to meet them so that when they arrive at their destination they're greeted by those who needed them who needed their words and needed their healing and needed their touch here we have exhausted disciple maybe even an exhausted Jesus pressed upon to keep going, pressed upon to keep going, to keep sharing compassion, to keep sharing their healing gifts, to keep sharing the good news of God's love for all people, particularly the sick. You see, they needed the rest. but they didn't get the physical rest, but they got the spiritual rest, you see. You see, they didn't get to take the break that they needed, but they did get the spiritual empowerment and renewal and recharge that Jesus was able to share in his presence and in his, in his words of, of love and, and life. You see, there's much the same message for you and for me in our weariness in this pandemic it doesn't help if we retreat and and hide in our way that's where we already are isn't it that's part of the problem is that we've been isolated and separated and and not allowed to interact and have the social life that we so depend on and, and need so much to be who we are but in our story today we see that Jesus is able to spiritually lift them up, direct them to the, the need that is before them, to those that need healing, that need to know the power of God's love. And as he directs the disciples to serve others, as they're healed by simply touching the garments, we see that their weariness is changed and transformed. And I'd like to say a lot of that is the same for us in this weariness that we face. I suggest that we have a, a spiritual tiredness, that this has drained us in ways that it's hard to put a, a finger on. I mean, I find in myself, in my own thoughts, difficulty difficult in finding how to deal with the, the sadness and the separation and all the, the changes. It sometimes feels like the glass is half empty rather than half full during this pandemic, doesn't it? And those feelings are real, and we've had them. But in Jesus saying to come and rest a while, he's telling us to, to actually be active in our rest to take our, our spiritual time of rest and put ourselves into prayer, put ourselves into to reading our Bible, put ourselves into making a spiritual journey with God. And as we share ourselves, even in our pandemic weariness, I trust that God will use God's word and the spirit to help us 
with our spiritual weariness. You see, where physical weariness, as uh, 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 Carrie McCauley says, we simply rest and do nothing and then become energized. But with spiritual weariness, doing nothing has just the opposite effect. It, it makes us feel more anxious, more separated. But if we take that weariness and we apply it to our spirit, if we feed our spirit with, with times of, of solitude, as McKellish did under the trees, she found inspiration. And I don't know where it might be for you, maybe in your basement, maybe in your kitchen, maybe out under the trees as well. But taking that time to rest from the activities of the day, taking that time to rest from the, the burdens of the day, to spiritually renew ourselves, to spiritually ask God for help, to spiritually look into God's word for advice and guidance, then we begin to actively work against this emotional weariness, this spiritual weariness. We begin to actively change through God's grace to seeing that we're not alone. And even though we're isolated and separate, that we're still joined together. And that even in all of this disruption, God is working through a plan and a unity in our lives. <clears throat> we simply must take the time to, to rest. Friends, I need to rest a while. I suggest we all need to rest a while. When Jesus saw his disciples and interacted with them, he was able to see that they needed a rest. And he knew that he needed a rest as well. But the rest that they received was one in actively involving themselves in sharing God's love. And in sharing that love, they then know that they are loved themselves. Empowering others, they are then empowered. And in the same way that we share love and we share power with others through our faith, then we are spiritually empowered in our weariness so that we may move forward and move out and be even more generous with what God has, has given to us as we share with others. My friends, Jesus knew the disciples needed a rest, and Jesus knows that you and I are weary as well. Let us take some time to be active in our rest, and address our, our spiritual weariness. And with our prayer life, and with our Bibles, and with our faith in our hearts, take a little time this week. Take a little time and rest a while. Amen, amen, and amen. to me all who labor and are heavy burdened and I shall give you rest take up my
Because my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Should I be surrounded by the shadows of death, I will not fear, for you are steadfast in your love. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy burdened, and I shall give you rest. Take up my yoke and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you'll find rest for your souls. Yes, my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Before my deep hunger you spread out your feast, my skin you anoint with the freshest of oil. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy burdened, and I shall give you rest. Take up my yoke and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you'll find rest. My yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Pursue me, O God, with your fathomless love. In your tent let me dwell all the days of my life. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy burdened, and I shall give you rest. Take up my yoke and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you'll find rest. Yes, my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Faith, thank you. This is the time when we share our joys and our concerns. Um, I have a, a couple that I want to, to of con prayer concerns that I want to share with you. Uh, one uh, was last Sunday. We prayed for Paula Finke's uh, aunt. Uh, she was 105 and she'd had a heart attack. And I, I've learned from Paula that she passed away uh, yesterday. We want to keep uh, her, Paula in our, our prayers. Uh, on, a, on a good note, though, uh, her husband, uh, John, had surgery on, on Monday, a, a knee replacement, and it went very well. And he's making a, a, a speedy uh, recovery. In fact, he's, he's getting ready to go already. Uh, we also want to continue to pray for uh, Paula's cousin, uh, Marie. Uh, Nancy, who's the director at team, this is her sister uh, who is uh, battling cancer and I believe has been moved into hospice even. So we want to, to keep them in our prayers. And we want to continue, continue to keep uh, Jerry uh, Forsales uh, in our prayers as well on his recovery from, from heart surgery. Are there any other uh, joys or concerns that you want to share with the congregation this morning? Okay, let's.
let's, uh, let's come together in prayer. Holy God, when we are weak, you are strong. When we are wandering and lost, you know the direction and the destination. When we are weary and worn out, you have renewal for our bodies and our spirits. Lord, in these times of struggle and challenge, make us aware of your presence. Make us aware of your care and make us aware of your love that empowers us and leads us forward. Lord, we pray that it is that love that will lead us to be your hands and your voice and your presence to those that need to know your love and to know your healing. Today we are thankful that John's surgery went well and his knee is, is healing and is getting stronger. We ask that you watch over Maria and bring her comfort in her battle with cancer. Be with Jerry as he recovers from his heart surgery. Be with Tom and Candy as uh, they work through all the, the complications of Tom's health. Lord, we pray that you'll guide the, the doctors and nurses and the families as they make the decisions and the, the healing processes that they need to, to make Tom feel comfortable and to, to make it able for him to come home and be well. Lord, be with Colleen and Carlene and with Lois. Be with Lynn. Watch over Diana as she recovers from her heart attack. Be with Fern and help her in her loneliness and separation. Watch over Carol and Doris. Be with Sarah. Be with Pamela. We're, we ask that you help with her and the, the migraines and the nausea and the disappointment from her float trip. Lord, be with Brittany and watch over her. Help her to, to become healthy and to, to begin to, to grow stronger. Be with little Elliot as he recovers from this serious brain uh, surgery, and we're thankful that he has had no seizures since the surgery. Be with Georgiana and her brother Gary. Be with Mary's brother. Be with Lil and Ruth and Jake and Sue and Sean and Lynn. Be with all those who are battling cancer and those whose names are unsaid, but in our hearts. Lord, we pray in the weariness of this pandemic, in this challenge that we have been under and the, the stress and the, the loss, Lord. Help us to place this all into your hands and know that you are the God of hope. In all of this loss and all of the confusion, Lord, help us to know that you will journey with us and that you will claim us and always, always keep us as your own. Lord, lead us forward as we care for others and as we come in, in worship to you. Help us to always, in our times of, of plenty and in our times of need, to turn to you in prayer and into your word for guidance and words of life. And it's in this life of love in Christ Jesus that we come with the prayer that he taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen We have some neat things going on in our congregation. Uh, we had a wonderful uh, uh, mobile market yesterday. We had three pallets of food and fresh apples to give away. And it was just, once again, a, a blessing to be able to help so many families here in, in Florissant and in the, the area. Now we have upcoming events. Uh, 
uh, this next Saturday, and I'm not going to steal the thunder on this, the bingo <laughs> extravaganza. Oh, you want to so, talk about it, Stephanie? Yes. Bingo extravaganza. I know you've seen these flyers. They are all over the place. They're right out front. And if you have not seen it, please, as you leave, go grab one. You want to come to this. You want to hear me talk to you about numbers as I call them off because I am just so fun to listen to. <laughs> so please come. Again, it's $10 per person. You get a booklet for 10 rounds, and there's four cards for each round. And if you want another one, if you're really daring, you think you can handle eight, you can have, purchase another one for $5. Uh, the doors open at 6. It's from 7 to 10. It'll be lots and lots of fun on July 24th, this coming Saturday. And I need to put another plug in here. If there are any of you that would like to help, you can still play bingo, but like to help, we need some help with setup in the morning, and um, we need some help with selling raffle tickets and just kind of holding on to the tickets. Uh, that would be for the heads or tails, the 50-50, and the basket raffle. And then, of course, somebody to help out just making sure the popcorn and soda is arranged for people so people can grab that and clean up, of course, too. So if you want to help with any of that, you can. You can like I said, you can still play bingo. You can do things two time at, times at once. And um, just please come. It'll be lots of fun. Thank you, Stephanie. A, a little insight. There is a contest for the best holiday uh, dress, costume. And it's a, a pot of gold chocolate. Uh, uh, coins uh, and I, I, a little heads up I hear there are some people that are, are doubling up on their holiday, holiday costumes they're not going to just be one holiday but they're going to be two holidays so we'll see if that ends up right. and this year we have the big grand prize and then we'll have a, a second prize and a third prize so we're going to share the chocolate gold coin wealth with everybody <laughs> we hope you can uh, join us uh, next Saturday are there any other announcements that we want to, to share this week? The mobile market? Well, yes, exactly. The, the grab and go will be Thursday. <laughs> Correct. Yes, thank you, Carol. Thank you. Yes, it'd be a big help. Thank you. Yes, and the grab and go this uh, Thursday. And we can use all the help we can get for the grab and go. It really takes a lot of people to put it on, and uh, we could use your help. So uh, we get here about 3.30, uh, uh, 4, we really, we, we're supposed to start handing out at 4.30, but people have been coming earlier even. They, they like our hot dogs, I guess, and our snacks. So, uh, but come enjoy it. It, it will be one of those things that I, I believe will be spiritually healing for you. I mean, it's, it's wonderful, wonderful. Is there anything else we want to, to share with the congregation today? Again, uh, thank you for, for your support, those who are online and uh, all of you are here who have mailed in their uh, offerings, who have put it in the plate or used uh, PayPal to make their uh, uh, contributions. And now I'm going to ask you to stand for the doxology. I did this for Scott. I don't, uh, uh, Ellen's ready. So <laughs> let's stand and sing the doxology and then our final hymn. final hymn uh, this morning is Though I May Speak. Uh, I, I did tell some of the group, all of the pictures on this song are people sleeping. So don't fall asleep in the pews, but uh, uh, let's stand and we'll sing together, uh, Though I May Speak.
in this pandemic. We're physically wearied and we're spiritually wearied. But even in this tiredness, Christ wants to give us rest. We're not alone. God goes with us. And in our active faith, in our scripture reading, in our prayer, in our life together, even in this weariness, Christ offers rest and renewal and recharging for those who will trust him and lean upon him and go out and share his love. My friends, we may be weary, but Christ will empower us, empower you and empower me to go out and share God's love today and tomorrow and always. So now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. My friends, go in peace. Amen.